Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Let It Die. So this one is going to be taking on the wall, the uh, player killer, the I'm going to make you quit the game boss. Okay, let's have a seat. Right, we're on uh, our striker, aka the disposable one. So there's a three star striker, Godwin. And the striker will be used to destroy the boss or die trying. And if they die, who cares? We'll go and retrieve them by force. So dying at this phase of the game costs an exorbitant amount of kill coins to recover your fighter. So yeah, I, I probably won't recover my fighters who will die at this point by repurchasing them from the fighter freezer. I'll recover them by killing them if they're hate or fight, well if they die and hate or fight on the floor. I'll go up with another fighter and collect them. So for that reason we'll be bringing no really rare things, really rare materials. We'll also wear no terribly expensive or rare decals, just disposable things. So the boss fight can go wrong, it won't be the end of the world if we lose the fight. We'll just go and kill our fighter and we'll have a second attempt. Alrighty, actually at the end of the last episode we uh, we finished off uh, looking for blueprints. Didn't find any. Uh, just after I, so I stopped recording in the same room as I finished there were like two blueprints. So I'll go ahead and uh, examine those to start off with. I looked it up and the motorcycle weapon should not be available on the lower end of the Candlewolf zone so we're gonna have to progress a bit to get that weapon. Hard puncher, awesome. R and D. Have a little look around here. Cost milk black. All right. Another milk black. Agamemnon cannot be upgraded. I probably want to upgrade the. Uh, well, I'll probably want to learn the first grade of the blood the uh, pitching machine. Seems like a good weapon. Requires strength, and it does. Uh, piercing damage, which is not bad for a Candlewolf Zone. So that's cool. Milk black though. So I guess our first milk black will be spent on this one. Alrighty. You can have those. Come back anytime. So let's see, what are we going to bring into the boss fight? A full set of armor, hopefully. Yep, there's the chest piece, the legs, a bunch of weapons, all the good stuff. What do we got? Hmm. Hopefully that's enough. Now a bunch of healing items and also a bunch of... Uh, oops, wrong one. A bunch of aggressive mushrooms, hopefully. Yeah, a couple of these. One, two, three, four, four should do. Either an umbrella rib or a cat eye shroom. Umbrella rib should do. What else? What are we missing? Mm hmm. Pill bugs? No, not really. Maybe. Oh, yeah, here. Grilled vampire fungus. I'll bring that and the life shroom. There we go. I'm trying to create a replicable boss killing strategy 
that anyone watching this video will be able to employ on uh, Goto 9 of Josenjima. So we've got the legs and chests. This might as well be just full uh, knight armor. It's got weakness to blunt, so I'm not sure what damage the boss does, it might be blunt, but... Hey, can't help it. Alright, there's something to work with. I'll be getting the hats off of one of my stored fighters. You, give me your hat. There we go. Put that in the storage box so we can get it out on this fighter. The Knight Helmet has a important quality to it, that's the stat increase. The helmets in this game increase your status. And the stat that is increased is Strength by plus 12. So that's a very good reason to have this helm in particular well upgraded, because it'll increase your boss uh, killing, uh, well, it'll increase your damage potential with uh, physical weapons. Equip those. Oh, I cannot equip the Iron Hammer because we don't have enough stamina. Well, damn. Okay, never mind then. Luckily, we've got enough luck to equip the Red Hot Iron Plus, because otherwise we would have had a bad day. Any other weapon I can bring instead of that? Well, nothing really seems to be good enough, so yeah. <coughs> Of course we could use a uh, discount decal, but eh, whatever. These two weapons should uh, should be enough. Okay, let's have a look. Are we fully prepared? Gonna go ahead and eat the life shroom. In case we take too much hits, and this will effectively increase your health to 150% of its norm. A uh, lizard that can be cooked for healing. I've got a couple of barb meat. Uh, those are from daily login bonuses, I believe. I didn't purchase those, but they cost 9,000 kill coins to purchase. Kind of expensive. I'd recommend just collecting a bunch of lizards or honeycombs and uh, bringing those to the fight with you. Honeycombs are really good healing. They would uh, uh, ideally like five or so honeycombs or five or six honeycombs would be would sort you for the fight, but I'm hoping not to take that much damage. I'm hoping I'm good enough at this boss by now <laughs> to take him out without taking too much damage. Of course I'll try and show the fight off as much as I can to show what moves he does, but I may have to rush it if my buffs run out because I do want him to die. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to waste these materials on him. Okay, I believe we may be good to go. Yep. Okay, Etches and Jima. The good thing about this boss is, uh, I guess they knew he was such a, a tough, tough cookie, a difficult challenge to deal with, that they put him right next to the elevator. So we'll be r put right next to the boss when we go up. Hmm. So as with most bosses, our strategy on this boss is having the right class, which is a striker for damage increase. If you're if shooting is more your playstyle, you might want a shooter, specialized class for damage. Have attack power increasing mushrooms, have healing mushrooms, and have uh, situational uh, beneficial mushrooms like the slow time and invisible shrooms are very good on bosses like they're extremely good for bosses those will be the main focus having a fully healthy weapons and armor equipped also important and we also have rage i don't know 
I don't think we've got anything necessarily to use the rage on, because the rage move for red hot iron is not a boss killing rage move. In any case, we should be good to start buffing. Now you want to start buffing before you go and initiate the boss fight, because it's easier to eat mushrooms when you're not in combat than when you are in combat. So all of these buffs that can stack, here it says, effect time 35 seconds uh, stacks. So you can stack these up for an increased duration. Also we're going to have a grilled vampire fungus to counteract the reduced HP from the grilled umbrella rib fungus. Because these, uh, the slow and invisible shrooms, nerfed versions, actually re remove your health as they're taking effect. So we're going to counteract that with the vampire fungus, which you can get by killing crabs. Uh, so yeah, crabs can be, yeah, the mushroom from killing crabs can be very helpful when dealing with bosses. Looking okay, everything seems fine. So we'll start the fight. Actually, before starting the fight, I think I'll talk about some things that a boss does before even going into the fight, because it'll be difficult to talk about everything at the same time. Now, this is uh, Goto 9. We know kind of what he does from seeing him before on floor 11. He kind of is the same as floor 11 Goto 9, but this one will do an extra attack which is he'll spit out a skeleton ad which will harass us during the fight so we'll have to take him into account finish him off as quick as possible he'll bounce around roll around the floor as the old uh, goto would do he'll also uh, he'll also spit uh, vomit which will make us trip you'll try and attack us with his tongue you'll mm, jump and try and squash us Actually, come to think of it, I may keep one attack shroom for if he goes into his hungry mode, so you'll feed him with the last one. Anyway, I have four slots open, which is a bad thing. I should probably have brought more things to deal with Goto. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how well this goes. Let's go. Buffing up with attack up 75%, damage increased to us for 25%, which is unfortunate, but we'll take it. And we get the Invis Shroom ready. Let's go. Hey, Hantaro, how are you? Are you there? Eat the Invis Shroom. And we're gonna turn invisible soon. We're invisible now. Yes. Attack, attack. He doesn't know where we are. Doing some wholesome damage. He's hungry. We'll feed him. Red Sting Shrooms always make him go turbo and um, bump into the edge. Blonk. Open him up to some more damage. Kaplow! Kaplow! And now, looks like we're doing okay. I'm gonna let him do some things so we can show off his moves. When he's charging towards you very fast, he'll do the forward chomping attacks. He'll bite you twice or he'll push you back. He's hungry again, we can feed him again. Here, have a mushroom. Yep, there's the knockdown attack. Here he goes, he spits out his skeleton ad. Which can be devastating. Get rid of him as fast as possible. Spit. Okay. He's doing his roll around the room thing. Trying to keep the camera trained on him. We'll mess it up like me. Be aware of where the uh, the puke is on the floor, so you don't get hit by that. Excuse me. Yeah, when he's aggressively moving towards you, either run away from him or run to the side of him, and then you'll do this uh, flip around move. Like, yeah, he's spitting out another skeleton. Flip around. And what do we do now? Flip around, yep. When you're at the side of him, he'll give you that. And this is your flip to face in your direction. Going for another bite. Nope, you missed. Flip. Coming towards us. Run away. 
what you're gonna do, Goto. Spit another skeleton. And ah, uh, she didn't manage to kill him. Okay, I'm gonna heal up a little bit. Ah, uh, there you. Gotcha. That was a knockback attack. When he does the upward bites, that'll knock your character down. He summons another skeleton. Okay, two two bite combo. The bonnet. Ooh, dangerous. Okay, so I quick recovered from fall. If you spam circle button now it's being knocked down, you quick recover and get back on your feet. Give it low health, we we'll see what happens. Oh more bouncing around, okay. Damn the skeleton. Whoops. Terrible timing there for me. Should have waited for his entire roll combination to end before dealing with the skeleton. He'll lock onto you and charge in your direction the moment he uh, starts his roll. So if you know he's rolling, try and be as far away from him as possible and get out of his uh, get out of his way. Seems to do free rolls and then gets tired. Wow, that was an interesting one. You know you could uh, turn mid roll. Anyway, we've still got some healing. He seems to be uh, in a spammy mood today. So he's only rolling. Probably a good time to heal or to use mushrooms would be after you know, going for the bite. Charging at us aggressively, some biting. Rolling, yes. Staying aware of where the informant is on the floor. Do another. Oh, a bounce. That comes out really quick, that'll, that'll ruin your day. Biting. Flip. More biting. Something. Come on, Goto. Do something we don't know yet. More jumping. As he lands, he'll always land on your the position you are when he starts his jump. It comes out really quick, but as long as you move just a small distance out of his way, you won't get squashed on. More charging. Roly poly goto. For this fight, I'd recommend having some stamina increasing decals or stamina reducing decals for dashing. Because there's a lot of movement in this fight. So as you can see, I've got a sprinter decal, which will allow me to do a lot of uh, a lot of dashing. And the rest is your personal preference. Whatever decals you're comfortable with using. See if you want that. Oh, you will actually eat a barb meat half portion. What will it do to you? I'm guessing healing. Ooh, nice healing. Blank. <laughs> there we go. More biting. Every time he walks towards you fast and aggressively, he's going for a bite. There's a free hit combo. Two bites. And the upward uh, lunging bites will knock you down on the floor. I haven't seen him do his knock you on the floor bites, or I haven't been hit by it yet. I'd like to show that off, but yeah, I don't want to be too too dangerous here. Yeah, yeah there it is. And you want to be ready to use your circle button to quick recovery from that, so you're not stuck on the floor. There we go. The AOE of the stomp knocking you on the floor there. Punch your ass. Yeah, the multi-head damage of the iron is very effective against Goto. He's almost dead. Oh, no. Punch your ass. And punch your ass. He's unlocked all the floors, and Goto is finished. Done and dusted. So as you can see, all the floors previously with a red lock have now been unlocked, giving us mm, plenty more options. Now of course he's right next to the elevator, and we can put him on farm mode now. Like, uh, if you're confident in fighting him and dodging him, you can 
come back to the fights without having to bring a bunch of healing items. Just bring some healthy weapons and some attack increasing shrooms and you should be good to, uh, to farm him. He's a great source of Candlewolf black metal. So we're going to go back to the waiting room just to uh, recollect some resources and uh, get ready for the next climb upwards. Though I expect the next episode will be about uh, the changes. I'll do one on the seasonal quests and the TDM and I'll have, a, I'll, I'll have a quick review of all the things that have changed since last recording uh, session and uh, see if I can go over all of those. This can be a really tough fight for uh, new players actually. This Goto is uh, one of the uh, wall bosses that really stop you from progressing. Again, the key is to upgrade what you have available to you as good as you can. As you can see, everything's plus four, as high as we can get it. Uh, except the knight armor. I could probably get that higher. You know, if you have a bit of patience, you can farm Kawabi for black medals, for black boss drop medals, and have some uh, slightly higher upgraded gear to fight uh, the... Uh, Etches and Jima go to nine, but these uh, these irons, these red hot iron pluses, should should do well. They should work well enough. I think the first kill I got on him was using a uh, steel axe upgraded to its next form. That was not an easy fight. It's a pretty slow weapon to deal with Goto. So let's have a look then. I'm on a couple of quests, collection quests, collecting Kalai shrooms, collecting the uh, pumpkins, killing a bunch of scratch tubers, screamers, a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, actually, uh, returning back to the waiting room means that our next... Yeah, the next time we go up, if you want to go to the floor behind Goto, you'll have to go through Goto again. But uh, yeah, I wonder which one that is. Would that be the uh, green escalator up? It's probably the green escalator up behind Goto. Uh, leading to another... Is that another elevator floor? It might be, it might not be. I don't know. Uh, do, 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 do. Might as well go and have a look. Let's do that. Uh, do, 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 do. I'll clear the bank of a couple of these. Way too many. Still got the life room buff. Still got umbrella red fungus. Any healing items? Uh, no healing items. Well, I guess I'll bring the pill bug for healing. It'll be fine. Yeah, we'll be fine. No worries. Cut you guys. And we're good to go. Oh, 1,000. Man. Yeah, we didn't get enough kill coins to be able to get back up to that floor. That is starting to get annoying, actually, not having enough uh, kill coins. Of course, we could just farm floor one for kill coins, but hey. Oh, welcome back. Thanks. There you go. Come back anytime. I'll be back in a minute. Got to. Uh, Say hello to our friend Goto9. Oof. I would uh, I would trade out this fighter for the collector so we can actually pick up all the stuff on our way on onwards, but the collector doesn't do as much uh, physical damage as the striker, so we're gonna use this one to get through Goto9 again and see which floor is behind him. Just having a quick peek. So 
So, onwards to Goto. Goto will always be to the left of the elevator, starting off uh, facing away from the elevator, to your left. So here we are again, Goto, our old friend. Let's say hi. Uh, let's say hello to him again. Get a couple of attack up shrooms. Not as much attack as we had last time. We're going to be fighting more aggressively this time. Uh, I'll have one more. Get this invisible ready. Eh. How oh, dare you! Still knows where we are. Invisible only activates after a set amount of time. Oh, you're up. So true. Get it. Ah, I didn't go for it. Ooh, how dare you. The tongue. You missed. You didn't use this tongue last time uh, for a lot of attacks. Mostly just rolling around. You don't use the tongue. Getting the thing about. Eat it. <laughs> what you gonna do? Yep, charge him. Blonk. Great time to get some huge damage in on him. So we finish him off. Yep. About that go too. Attack increasing mushrooms will often cause him to stun himself. So it's a good way, it's a good thing to remember. Attack increase, stun go to. Either stun rooms or crush rooms will work on him. So let's see where we end up. Okay, so these gates all open from this side, so you have to defeat Goto to get through here. And then Sum... what is it this? Sumikyo! Okay, doesn't look like there's any locked gates from here. So now that we defeated Goto, it may be possible to explore all the areas around Goto without having to fight him again. So we'll only need to do this fight from now on to... Ooh, quest unlocked. Uh, I guess farm the resources he drops? Because the green escalator up is guarded by Goto, and the other routes will all be... they will be safe. There are no rooms behind Goto, and there's no escalators besides the green escalator up behind Goto, so he's really just guarding that green escalator. And it looks like there may be other ways of reaching Sumikyo without going through Goto. So I think I'll just call it a day, return through the uh, Goto arena, and go back to the waiting room. We've unlocked this route now. No problem. And he's a fun boss to farm, once you get the hang of him. Great source of Candle of Black. Come on, don't have all day. Come on, load his screen, seriously. Well, anyway, that's the end of the episode. Edges of Jima. See you guys in the next one.